Just behind me is the Great Hall at Montsylvain at Eltham in Victoria. It's quite special, isn't it? I think it is. It's nothing to do with Hungarian cooking, but what I am cooking is, and I'll make this excuse really quickly, a sort of Hungarian dish, just so that I don't have any irate Hungarian viewers, which I did the last time I cooked a Hungarian dish. I said it was Huey's version, and they keep kept attacking me. Oh, not really, but they kept telling me I was doing it wrong, which they most certainly right, but, you know. This one is a Huey's version. It's sort of a Hungarian dish. First of all, I've got a couple of onions which I've just diced, and we'll put that into some hot olive oil. And I do want these to brown. And I want them to burn, there is a difference. But I'm going to cook those for quite a while until they're golden brown. Just break it up. All right, I'll just swap that over. You can stay there, Rob. And I'm also going to do exactly the same with the chicken. I've just got a portion chicken here. And I'm going to put that in some hot olive oil, skin size down. And I'm also going to cook that until that is well brown on all sides. Let's just have a look at those chickens. Yeah, they're getting some colour. Alright, while that's all happening, what I will do is just prepare now, the word is prepare. And that's what I'm going to do. Just prepare a couple of green capsicums. Just take out the core of both of them, and also the seeds. Get rid of those, because I do want to dice them reasonably finely, and I don't want any seeds in them. Also, just be a bit careful about these ribs take those out as well. But do keep an eye on this onion because I want it to brown, but I certainly don't want it burnt. Yeah, that's alright, that's starting to get a bit of colour, you're all right there. Now we'll just turn that down a little and keep cooking, but I will add the smallest amount more olive oil because it's disappeared. Get the top back on, it'd help, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's starting to get a bit of colour. Look, if you get a couple of odd bits of black, you're fine, but you certainly don't want the whole thing. And make sure you scrape that bottom, because that gives you the colour edder, or the added colour to it. That gives you the added colour to it if you scrape that bottom. Still keep an eye on the chickens, keep on turning them. Because as I said, I want these well brown. And let's get back to our capsicum. The 10 year plan, I think. So with the green peppers, we just throw them in with the onion and we also saute them gently. Turn down the heat maybe a little bit once the green capsicum goes in. I actually think that's enough capsicum because it's quite predominant. I don't want it to take over the whole dish. Whoa, this is getting some colour. This is good. Yep, we're doing well here. I did say well browned and I meant it literally. It's making a lot of noise but it's doing well. Alright, we'll just put that over to the side there. Let's just grab that. To that I'm then going to add a couple of good tablespoons of paprika and put it in while this is still dry so that we toast that paprika. Make sure you scrape the bottom, get everything off it. All right that's enough. To that I then add one can of chopped tomatoes which we have drained when I say one can of chopped, one can of peeled tomatoes which we've drained and chopped. I knew what I was talking about. And some chicken stock. About one and a half, two cups 
I'll just add one and a half most of at this stage. We can always add a little more if we want to. And just mix that in really, really well. Make sure you mash up any of those tomatoes that are still a bit big. Add some freshly ground salt. You don't need any pepper purely and simply because you have got all that paprika in. So you don't need to add black pepper as well. Even I don't need to add it. And that's saying something, isn't it? All right, so we then put this chicken that we brown really, really well into this. Make sure you drain it fairly well because we don't want a lot of more oil in that sauce. And let's just try and get it into this pan so that it's semi-buried. I'll just baste it with some of these juices. All right. Now, I'm going to cook that fairly gently. You know, a little bit of a bubble going with it. You know, not, not really, really low. And I'm going to cook it uncovered so that the sauce cooks down. And I'm going to cook it for about, I'd say, 20 to 25 minutes because you have sealed that chicken really well. Now, you can turn it down a bit lower if the sauce is disappearing a little bit too much. But just before I do that, I will just check the seasoning because it may need a little bit more salt. We don't know, but just check. Mm, it does. There we go. All right. You don't need to cover it, as I said, because we do want that sauce to boil down a little, but we will turn it down so that it's not simmering quite as rapidly as that. And as I said, 20 to 25 minutes should be pretty right. Thursday on the brand new season of Charm. They've gone from sexy witches to sizzling superheroes. Head rush. Let's do it again. Okay, give me a sec while my organs catch up. And all new Charmed, 7.30 Thursday. I'm stocking up for the Bilo Market Day, Wednesday every week. Firm ripe bananas. $1.85 a kilo. Bog pack blade steak. $4.97 a kilo. Bilo, extra value for you. Specials available this Wednesday only. With Sanitarium Up and Go, you get the goodness of two wheat bix and milk in a delicious smoothie. Making it the healthy breakfast for when you have to up and go. And now it's even tastier. Look, to be honest, I'm no tree hugging greenie, but when it comes to the environment, I like to do my bit. I use safe toilet tissue. It's made from clean, recycled office paper. The safe is strong, soft, and gentle where it counts. Oh, and every pack you buy helps support Planet Ark. So now, when nature calls, you can do your bit. Speaking of which... Do your bit and save with SAFE! Whatever you're doing around the house, you'll find a giant home improvement range at Bunnings Warehouse. Like toolbox with built-in organisers, only $7.87. Spring flat plastic interior, just $13.54. Electric mulching blower vac, a sensational $87. Cobweb extension broom, only $4.97. Soaker hose, just $4.92. And if you happen to find a cheaper price on a stocked item, we'll beat it by 10%. Bunnings Warehouse! Lowest prices are just the beginning. Wonder White, twice the fibre of regular white bread, that'll make it twice as easy to find. Wonder White, twice the fibre. Anything? They've done it to us again. Wonder White, twice the fibre of regular white bread. If you just can't find the time for a sit-down breakfast, you can still get the calcium, fibre and protein of two wheat bix and milk from every delicious pack of Sanitarium Up and Go, making it the healthy breakfast for when you have to up and go. If you think being a kid can suck, imagine if your school was like this. Somebody's got a teacher or a lesson. Just like Harry Potter, this special girl has a magical gift. Have a carrot! Proving we all have the power to change the world. Matilda, 6.30 Saturday. Now this is looking good. There's one thing that I forgot to mention. Is do turn it over a couple of times. You know, so that all the chicken gets some of the flavour of the sauce. Right, let's just take this chicken out. I will take it all out, but of course, 
it's it's about four portions because I believe that one each one of each piece is enough because it's quite a large chicken. But I'll get it all out and you'll see why in a second. The crew are hungry, so they'll they'll eat it all. Won't even last two seconds with that ravenous lot around. Right, we've got this sauce, we want to thicken it slightly. So what I'm going to do is just some parsley in a bowl, some sour cream. Now, with the culinary doctor I recently had a letter saying to me that when they add sour cream to a sauce which is hot, it is curdling. Now that, that does happen sometimes and you have to be very careful. The first thing about it is you do turn it off, but the second thing is if you add a spoon of flour to the sour cream, that makes it more stable. You won't notice it, you really won't. Make sure you mix it in really, really well though, and it won't give it a floury taste, but it will make it more stable and it won't separate. This is when you keep your fingers... I have made this amazing statement. I hope I'm right. No, I am. Will I lie to you? Never. So, we'll add the sour cream to this liquid, which is still reasonably hot, but I, as I said, I have turned the heat down just a little. And then just mix it in fairly gently. Now, aren't I a little show-off? Because you can see that's working perfectly. Yeah, I knew. So that sauce is coming back together. So there was a bit of oil on the top, which is natural because you've cooked those onions in quite a bit of oil. And it's creamy without actually adding cream, but giving that bit of sort of culture that the sour cream has, just to give that bit of extra flavor. And what I will do is, it looking a little bit messy, is I'll just take one of those pieces of chicken off. That looks better, doesn't it? Well, it looks a bit better anyway. And we'll just grab a spoon, and let's ladle a decent amount of the sauce over the top. Now look, that sauce is perfect. So that's a tip and a trick that's really worked, which is always lovely. So a good amount of that. Sprinkling of parsley over the top. And then, last but not least, a bit of a clean up. And look, that looks a bit of a big mound, I think. I maybe should have just served one breast, but the thing that I'm excited about, it's got some real flavour to it. You know, it's got a bit of paprika in, but the sour cream just mellows it out. That's a very delicate, very interesting dish. Maybe not terribly authentic, but nice anyway. Better night, better time. 8.30 tonight. The Guardian's never been hotter. She's a married woman. What the hell is wrong with you, Lulu? He's a bad boy. I wanted to be with you. They've given him to temptation before. But in this sexy new season, more than one deadly sin will be broken. Every conversation we have ends with you telling me I should divorce Brian. Who? Australia's Simon Baker in the series you can't resist. The Guardian. 8.30 tonight on 10. I'm stocking up for the Bilo Market Day, Wednesday every week. Firm ripe bananas. $1.85 a kilo. Bog pack blade steak. $4.97 a kilo. Bilo, extra value for you. Specials available this Wednesday only. Look, to be honest, I'm no tree-hugging greenie, but when it comes to the environment, I like to do my bit. I use safe toilet tissue. It's strong, soft and gentle where it really counts. Speaking of which... Do your bit and save with safe! I was only eight years old when my parents left us three girls to find work in the city. I and my sisters had a small push cart for ourselves. We depended much on gathering recyclable junks to earn money for us to buy food. Life was really hard and I felt like I had to grow up fast for my two younger sisters. That was the downest point, the down point of my life. I actually got sponsored that same year and since then life started to change. 
provision provided me a better future by sending me to school, by providing clean water supply and health and sanitation. Child sponsorship does make a difference to a needy child's life because it gives them hope and opportunities for life, opportunity for a better life. You can give a child like Ethel a brighter future by sponsoring them for as little as around $1 a day. Sponsor online now or call World Vision on 13 32 40 today. You know, there is an easier way to get your kids to the dinner table. Because they can't resist the great taste of old El Paso. I always tell you you can make salads with almost anything, but this one surprised even me. Watermelon and feta cheese. Sounds different, doesn't it? It was beautiful. I had it in a restaurant, admittedly in the States, but it was lovely. Loved it. First of all, a dressing. Just some olive oil. Fresh lemon juice. Um, thinking about it, lime juice would most be nice too. Not too much lemon juice. I don't want it too tart because I'm putting another couple of flavourings in it. So about half a lemon. I was trying to think what that was there for a second. And I've got what I've got here is some harissa. Now I've shown you how to make harissa before, but you can buy. I'm not saying particularly this brand, but you can buy it in some delis. Um, supermarkets as yet don't have it a lot, but some of the sort of the, the specialist delis you can find these tubes of harissa. Now harissa of course is a Middle Eastern chili paste. They use it a lot in Morocco. And we'll just use a little bit of that because it's quite fierce. If you can't find that, sorry I've got my back to you, I shouldn't be talking with my back to you. If you can't find harissa, a little bit of sambal olic or even some fresh chili would most probably work. I will also add a little bit of salt to that and also the smallest amount of pepper. And what we will then do is just taste it. And I'll just get that, first of all, I'll just get that one lemon pip out there. Then we'll just taste it. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Now, the watermelon. I've cut it in cubes, and this is a bit like peeling a grape because I've taken any of the pips out, or the seeds. You can get seedless watermelon. I couldn't find one at the shop, unfortunately. So if you can find a seedless one, it makes life a lot easier. But just make sure it's nice and fresh and reasonably firm. You can always tell when watermelon's not very good because it's all cracked. You don't want that. All right, so we'll just throw that into the bowl. Just carefully, don't, don't be a little bit, or be a little bit gentle with it. And to that, I'm then going to add some very finely sliced red onion. Not too much. Just break that up. Some feta cheese. When you buy feta, always try to buy this crumbly one. You see what I mean? Because that is always the best, a good Greek feta. So just crumble some feta into there. You know, if it's too firm, it just doesn't seem to have the same flavour. It's just not as good. Now, the Greeks may say to me that's a ridiculous way to, to rate it, but it just seems to me that that's the case. I don't know whether it's right or not. And some olives. I've just got some pitted black olives. Oh, not too many, mate. And we'll just cut those maybe in quarters. You chop them up if you want to, I don't care. I'm not a great fan of salads that actually have olives with stones still in. I, I, it defeats the purpose to me. I think when you're eating a salad you shouldn't be bothered about pulling out the stones. Also got some Italian parsley or flat leaf parsley and I'm just going to pick 
some sprigs of that. I'm pretty keen on this as a salad ingredient lately. I've just got all excited with it, but it's, it really works. It's, it's a good leaf to use in a salad, particularly if they're nice and fresh and young like these ones are. I'm not mad on using the big sort of old ones that are huge. They don't do much for me. So that, and also to carry along that theme, I've got some fresh mint, which I'm just going to tear a few leaves in. All right, that's looking good. Not too many herbs, but you know, they just add that freshness and lightness. If you pre-prepare it beforehand, that's fine. Don't add the herbs in until the last moment. Now we'll just toss that dressing in there. Toss that around well, but being a little bit gentle. I don't want that watermelon to break up. That's the whole thing. All right, that looks good. Let's just grab a bowl, mound it in that. When I actually had this in the States, it was served as an appetizer. It was very interesting, just with a glass of champagne. It was lovely, really enjoyed it. I think we followed it with some, you know, fairly simple grilled meat, but it was, it was a lovely appetizer, so try it like that. Or you could try it as an accompaniment to some grilled meat. Or even you know, a bit of grilled fish, it'd be nice with, wouldn't it? Now, it looks nice, but I have made a bit of a mess. I'll just clean up the plate. Now, that's light and fresh. It's got some interesting flavours. Look, I know it sounds a bit funny. Try it, you won't be disappointed. Coming up on the 11.30 News, a huge bomb blast in the southern Philippines kills 19 people and wounds more than 100. Religious violence held to blame. Iraq destroys more Al Samud missiles, but America steps up the war rhetoric, saying it may go it alone without UN backing. A union threat could stop mail collections from letterboxes indefinitely. And the world is on our doorstep, literally. The mammoth cruise ship sailing into Sydney Harbour. Details shortly here on Team. Exotic names, dream destinations, and one sound brings them together. The world's premier motor racing event comes to Channel 10. For the three big days, experience an Australian Grand Prix like never before. Join expert commentators Bill Woods, Neil Crompton and the team for the ultimate coverage. New rules, new regulations, a whole new direction. Live, the Formula One Australian Grand Prix starts Friday on Channel 10. It's not only about getting smaller. I work in tech support in the computer industry where everything is meant to get smaller. But Jenny Craig is more than that. I learned what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat, and how to enjoy my exercise. I learned how to lose weight and to keep it off. I downloaded 22 kilos. It's not only about losing weight. With the tech support Jenny gave me, my whole life changed. Hurry, this is the final week to get 50% off. Call Jenny on 131992 today for all the help you need. Whatever you're doing around the house, you'll find a giant home improvement range at Bunnings Warehouse. Like 10 light bulbs for only $3.98. Hobby boxes, a great buy at two for $9. Garden light kit, all for only $19.98. Weed killer, great value at just $8.83. Bustic zero nails or gaff seal, two for $4. And if you happen to find a cheaper price on a stocked item, we'll beat it by 10%. Bunnings Warehouse! Lowest prices are just the beginning. Things that make you go, mmm. Take care of your taste buds with McDonald's new Chicken Delight Burger. Imagine juicy tomato, lettuce and chicken marinated with mustard seeds for only $3.75. Things that make you go, mmm. Come down to 239 Hume Highway, Chalora and grab this one for five or this one for seven. How's this for 19? How are these for 149? Sydney's cheapest pot liquidation, 239 Hume Highway, Chalora. Now 
are lots of recipes these days. You see harissa, which is of course a Middle Eastern chilli paste. And you can buy it in tubes, but you can't buy it in every single supermarket. It's sometimes a little hard to find. But you can make it at home very, very easily. First of all, what you need, now this is a very simple version, and first of all what you need is a couple of tablespoons of coriander seeds and one tablespoon of cumin seeds. And you just put that into a dry pan. No oil, no butter, anything, just dry like that. And you put it over reasonably low heat and you toast it. Just to release the aromas. And you will smell it when it's happening. So we'll just leave that to the side. Then next, what we also put in it is four chilies. Remember, this is a chili paste. Just take the stalks off, chop that up reasonably fine. It's going into a food processor, but you can't just throw it in whole. So four of those, the small hot little numbers, and also two cloves of garlic. Oops, I've just pulled over one of those stalks. We'll leave the seeds in and everything. Let's just keep an eye on these. Yeah, they're starting, you can see them starting to change colour. You can also see that what you, or you can smell that wonderful aroma coming from that. So we'll put that into one of these little processors, which I actually have bought one of these just to use as a spice blender. Because, you know, if you then go and do something else with it, obviously it's going to be flavoured by the spices. So just buy a little one if you like, or you can do this in the mortar and pestle too. And four tablespoons of good olive oil. and then a grinding of rock salt. Quite a generous amount of rock salt. And let's have a look at these. Ah, oh, yeah, they're good. You can see how they've changed colour there. And it's, unfortunately, it's not smell-o-vision and you can't smell it. You have to be very careful with these because you don't want them to burn, and they can burn unless you watch them, watch them carefully. And the other thing is keep the, the heat down fairly low. And then what we do is we'll whiz that up. Alright, that's looking good. Let's just pull that out. Let's just have a look at that. Just mix that up fairly well. Yeah, that's good. Now, you could put a little less oil in, but what I do is I put that extra bit of oil purely and simply because I want to keep it for a while. And the oil takes up all the flavours and makes it a lot easier to use. So it's not quite as solid as some, but just have a look there. That will last in the fridge for a month or two very easily. So you can have it in the fridge and whenever you need a little bit of a spicy Moroccan style chilli paste, you've got it right there. If you'd like any recipes from today's show, call us on 1902 211 963. And don't forget to check out this week's fresh food specials in the Bilo catalogue or visit the Bilo website on www.bilo.com.au. Well, we're actually out of time, so it's a very sad time of the day because I'm going. <laughs>